Hi guys. Hi, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to CBD Talk Live. Welcome, come on in the building. We welcome all CTFO family members and friends, people for the first time who has been here on CBD Talk Live. Guys, I'm getting, giving everybody a minute to go ahead and come in the room. Welcome, welcome. Hello. Hi, hi, Richard. Hi, how's everybody doing? Hi, Nina. Be sure to share um, the feed and also there's a little blue notification button that will allow you to know when we go live so you don't miss it if you want to catch us right in that moment of being live. So guys, be sure to hit that notification button so you can get those notifications just like you would on um, YouTube with the little bell. All right, everybody, come on in. Come on in. Let me know if you can hear me because I am going to turn the music down once I get started. I'm going to get everybody just a minute to get here. If you can just let me know that you're here, give me some type of emoji. Let me know that you are in the building. Thank you, Richard. Appreciate it. Okay, guys, I'm going to go ahead and turn the music down. We're going to go ahead and get started. So for all those who are watching this live, welcome again to CBD Talk Live with your host, Latasha J. And I have an important topic that we're going to share with you tonight on a health issue that has been going on for a long time with so many people and you probably have seen it before so let me get into the visualization of it and then we can go ahead and get into um, some of the research about it and some solutions so guys how many of you have seen or dealt with a family member or just seen somebody out in public and their skin look like it's ashy or chalky all the time. It looked like they have a cluster of rash and it's really chalky and ashy all the time. How many of you have ever seen that type of skin condition before? Okay, guys, um, people who suffer from the skin condition, um, actually, hey, doc, hey, welcome, welcome. Uh, people who actually suffer from the skin condition go through a whole lot, a whole lot more than what you think. I'm just going to the statistics about the skin condition, which is called psoriasis. Now, this is going to be powerful because some of the things that you think you know about psoriasis is not always everything, the total facts about it. And there's some things that you might not know, like for instance, I was saying in my promo that when I was doing my research on psoriasis, I was shocked by what it could lead to just for this simple skin condition, okay? It says that just in America alone, people, 7.5 million Americans suffer from psoriasis. That's 2.2%. That's just in the United States. Now, when you're talking about worldwide, you're talking about 125 million people who suffer from psoriasis. That's anywhere from 2% to 3% of 
of the whole population of the world. That is really crazy to walk around and have this skin condition that can get so chronic, guys, so chronic that it leaves your skin blistery red, sensitive to the touch, you're itching all the time, your skin is inflamed, and you end up developing puscules, pus bumps all over your skin eventually due to it not being treated. But guys, I'm here to tell you that we can offer you a solution. And we'll talk about that at the end of this slide, close to the end of the slide. So let's find out what psoriasis is. It's a condition in which the skin cells build up and form scales, itchy, um, scales and itchy dry patches. So basically it's an autoimmune um, deficiency disorder in the body that attacks um, your skin. So how many of you know that the largest organ on your body is the skin? Um, your skin is very delicate. It can be prone to just about anything. And it definitely is one of those um, organs that will signal off when your body is having something wrong. If you're detoxing and you get a pimple or you get some type of rash, just letting you know that something is going on in the inside that's not right. So with psoriasis, it's firing off. The disorder is firing off on the inside of your body and it's triggering on the outside of your body. And so the signs of that would be the scaly patches, the thick layer circles or, or bigger patches all over your body or maybe in one spot. Okay, it goes on to say it's a chronic autoimmune condition that causes rapid buildup of skin cells, which causes scaling on the surface with redness and inflammation. It can appear to be whitish, silverish in color and develop into thick red patches. Now, seeing this skin condition is horrible for some people because like I told you before, not only does um, you having an illness, a condition, or a disorder, it not only does it affect your physical body, but it also affects your mental body. So people that go around with this, a lot of us have stigmatism that every time we see something on somebody's body, we don't want to be near them. We don't want them touching us because we think they have something that might give us something which is sad because these people have to walk around, especially when it's chronic, have to walk around with this skin condition. Imagine wearing shorts because you have to, because it's like 98 degrees outside. It's summertime, it's springtime, and you're wearing shorts, you know, so you can feel comfortable, but you still don't feel comfortable because you have psoriasis. So you have all these crazy, silvery, thick, leathery patches of skin that's scaling and flaking all over your body. And people are thinking that, oh, something's wrong with this person. Why do they have that on their skin? So that begins to affect your self-esteem. So I always tell people all the time, try not to judge anyone when you see them. You never know what's going on with them with their health. Okay. So let's go on to the symptoms of um, psoriasis. So we already talked about the raised red skin, the flame patches of skin, the whitish, silverous, scaly patches or what is called plaque on the skin. And it goes on to say that your skin, you may have psoriasis also if you start to get dry and cracked skin that starts to bleed. Those are some of the signs as well. You'll also experience soreness around any of the patchy areas. So you begin to get that little layer of thickness and the silvery looking ashy tone to it. And then you'll start feeling soreness and burning that type of irritation with your skin. And also, um, you'll notice some people will have psoriasis in the nails. And it also will cause your nails to be rounded off like a hook, like a club. And in between that space of your nail bed, your toe nail bed, um, you'll see that thick psoriasis up in there. And some people think, oh, it's, you know, it's just crud. That's what they call it. And they try to dig it out. A lot of times that's psoriasis. Okay. And not fungus, but psoriasis can look like that as well. 
it's also also people may experience painful and swollen joints so let's talk about where you can get psoriasis at on your body where can it appear well guys it can appear i know you already seen the normal places where it can appear but i'm about to talk about some places where you didn't expect for psoriasis to appear at okay you heard about having it on the scalp if anybody has been in the medical field you've seen it on the scalp area on the face on the hands on the arms on the legs on the feet you probably haven't seen it on the toenails or didn't recognize it because you probably thought it was um, toenail fungus when it was probably psoriasis um, but you can also get it on your private areas your breasts all those special areas can also end up with psoriasis how many of you did the uh, how many of you knew that you know you can actually have these on your private areas guys now isn't that horrible to know that the intense intense <laughs> intense excuse me my language is all dry today intense itching and burning that you may be experiencing may be because you have psoriasis that have gotten out of control and have spread to those sacred areas imagine that so um that's why it's definitely you want to get your skin condition checked out when you have something that looks like it could be psoriasis check it out make sure that that's what it is okay because it could be psoriasis those are just certain places and like i said before the toenails people don't think you can get psoriasis on the toenails you can get it on the toenail bed and it looks like it's fungus but it's not it's psoriasis guys so that's just some crazy places that it can pop up besides the elbows the inner and outer elbows and everything like that you know about that because you've seen that area the back and all of that type of stuff okay so let's talk about some triggers what are some triggers that can actually cause psoriasis to flare up well the studies show that high stress levels can trigger off psoriasis eventually high stress levels so if you're one of those people who already have very um, allergic skin you know or um, you have some type of skin condition already your immune system because stress is like a negative it sends off negative um, hormones in your body that causes you to end up feeling sick and getting sick and you can end up getting um, signs of psoriasis you can end up eventually getting psoriasis due to a lot of stress but I'm about to give you a, a very powerful um, trigger that people don't think could cause psoriasis, okay? So like I was saying before, your stress levels can induce that. Now, we know that everything usually starts in the mind when it comes to illnesses. But it's so crazy that even with skin conditions, this can happen too. And just another example of that is how many times... Have you met someone or somebody in your family, whether they be friends or whatever, and they always have a nervous energy to where the point where if they got to stand up in front of class or in front of people or they're around people they don't know, they get so nervous that they break out in hives. Have you ever heard of that or seen that from a family member? They, they have broken out in hives just from the nervous tension or the stress they break out in what looks like um, a heat rash or um, hives. I've had a family member that actually went through that and goes through that. Um, anytime she's under a high level of stress and she's in the medical field, a high level of stress or anything like that, she will break out in hives. You know, she'll break out in like a heat rash. It looks like a heat rash. Well, the same thing can happen with psoriasis. And here's one of the ones that I did not know can actually cause psoriasis. That's a trigger. PTSD. Now that's crazy. PTSD can be a trigger for psoriasis. How many of you knew that? Anybody in here knew that? 
Well, that was a shocker for me because I would never think that just because you have PTSD, it can probably eventually lead to you getting a skin condition called psoriasis, but it has happened. Okay, so um, another trigger is, it's a trigger and also it can be a help depending on how much you get, is sunlight. So for people who have um, um, autoimmune uh, deficiency or disorder uh, with psoriasis, they can't be around intense sunlight. But sunlight does help their condition in light doses, small doses. So let's say like um, sunset, you know, sunrise, that type of light. Um, dim sunlight during the winter time and the fall, you know, the sun is not all that bright sometimes during that time. But when you're talking about intense heat and intense lights, like at noon and it's summertime and it's 101, people with psoriasis suffer a whole lot because it aggravates their condition. They can't be around that much sunlight. So if you have psoriasis and you're like, well, it acts up really bad in the summertime and you can't figure out why, this is why. The sunlight helps you and at the same time it harms you when it's too much. And that goes for people who like to tan who have psoriasis, people who um, use the UV ultraviolet light, the same thing. If it's too much, too much of intensity, it can do more harm than good for your psoriasis. So we're going to talk about remission. Is remission possible for psoriasis? That means, can it be cured? Unfortunately, it can be cured. There is no known cure for it at this time. And it can go into remission with treatment. So um, with uh, treatment, you can go into remission. And that's just taking the steps that you need. And we got a solution for that. We'll talk about that at the end. A natural one that will help you with that condition. Um, but you can actually go into remission if you get it under control. So if you get it under control, it can have a habit of going dormant. And dormant means it just goes to sleep. The condition just fades away for a while and it does not appear on your skin. Your skin starts healing up, you're looking better, and your body is healing itself and going into remission. And that's when you take those steps needed to be able to get it under control. Okay, so um, this is a shocker for me, but let's go into some of the appearances of psoriasis. So um, usually when it first starts off, people might mistake it for ringworm because psoriasis also has that circular pattern, okay? And, um, you can actually see like little red bumps or bumps that will begin to appear, but they're intensely itchy. Well, so is wingworms as well. So people who have wingworms or had it before, they might mistake the psoriasis uh, for wingworms at first. But then as you keep messing with it and aggravating it, it begins to show its psoriasis signs, the bleeding, the cracking, um, then the thickening, of the skin it's a thick thin thick glary patch over and it just keeps getting thick as time goes on and it's not treated properly um and um also um the silver coating like i said before the silvery patchy looking type plaque circles on your skin will begin to develop and then you started noticing, hey, this is more than just eczema. This is more than just the wingworm. This looks like it might be psoriasis. So this is one of the crazy facts that I'm going to share with you that can happen with psoriasis. This is another shock for me. People, you can go into remission, but if it's left untreated, the question is, can you die from the effects of psoriasis? Yes you can die from the effects of psoriasis. So we're gonna talk about that right now. Now, 
if your psoriasis, and this was a, a shocker for me, a skin condition being able to kill you like this. It's not like, I was thinking, you know, you, you think about skin eating disorders, you know, skin eating, flesh eating bacteria doing that, but you never think of psoriasis. Okay, something that's itchy, flaky, causes inflammation. You never think of something like this being able to eventually take your life. Well, it can. And like I said before, it's because it's not being controlled. You're not treating the problem. You're not doing anything to get it under control. And that's when it leads to higher inflammation. And that's when you start seeing the deepness, redness of the skin and you start to swell. Your skin starts to swell up. The layers of skin gets real thick and crusty, like crusty like never before and real patchy. Then you just you start to develop what is called puscules or pus bumps all over your body. And that is dangerous with also the breaking of the skin with it bleeding because this is what happens guys if you're not treating your skin when this happens when you're not keeping it clean or anything bacteria sets in bacteria sets into your skin and when that happens you're going into a danger zone and it can lead to what is called sepsis or a septic shock because now you have the psoriasis becoming a full-blown infection on your skin and it's going into your bloodstream, which is dangerous because your bloodstream is like the river to your body. Anything that's of contaminants or anything that's good flows through those rivers and those canals of your body and your bloodstream. So when you start getting pus bumps and all of that from psoriasis left untreated and they start opening up and getting into your bloodstream and the cuts and cracked skin that's bleeding is not being treated and disinfected and taken care of, you can die. And when you start having septic shock, your, your body literally starts shutting down. So that means your body has gone into full bacterial and viral load is out of control. So much bacteria in your, in your body that your body eventually, the white blood cells say, I give up. I just give up. I can't do it. And your body starts sending out signals when you go into septic shock, like high fever. People may think you have the flu and you have septic shock and you go into high fever you your body your organs they all just start shutting down so we'll talk about septic shock at another time but i just want to give you a view of how dangerous it can be and once you get septic shock i've seen this in the healthcare field with people who get it from infections and stuff like that it's a matter of seconds guys between life and death so that's why you want to get psoriasis treated because it's not just something that's always a, a rash, you know, it's just a rash. If you put some cream on it or you just leave it alone, it, it'll go away or, you know, you can't really die from it. You can actually die from this skin infection, this this horrible disorder, okay? So um, is it contagious? So for those people who have seen people with these patches all over their skin, is it contagious? No, it's not. But can it spread within one person? Yes. It can get so aggravated that it can start to spread all over your body. It won't spread to anybody else. So if you touch somebody who has psoriasis, you're not, you're not going to get it too. It's not like that. It's not like wingworms where you just can brush up against somebody with wingworms. And next thing you know, you're going to have it too eventually. So um, that's the great side about it is you're, you know, you don't have to worry about being around your family member that might have it or your friends or somebody might just get introduced to and they might have it all over their hands or whatever. You're not, it's not contagious, okay? Um, so let's talk about another shocking factor with psoriasis. The life expectancy of someone who has psoriasis. So guys, you may think, well, oh, it's a skin condition. You know, you can live forever, whatever, blah, 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 um, yada, yada. Left untreated. 
let's talk about left untreated, you know, because if you do the proper things that's needed, you can live a long, fulfilled life, period. I don't care what you have. If you take the right treatment, you take the right steps towards living a healthier life and, and doing all that you need to do holistically, you can have that long life, okay? That's possible for you. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. It's possible, okay? But if you do nothing, and this disease that you have, this disorder with your skin, can shorten your lifespan, people. Shorten your lifespan. So it talks about in the research that people who are 25 who are diagnosed with this disorder before 25 don't live to see age 60 in most cases. 60 years old, okay? Their life is cut short. So that's pretty sad. It's heartbreaking to know that you suffering through this skin condition is bad enough. Nobody really want to touch you. Nobody wants to be bothered with you if they don't understand what psoriasis is. And then now you're facing that shortened time of life due to psoriasis. So guys, this is a serious, serious condition. People need to take it more seriously and um, take the steps that's needed to be able to have a better life and push it towards permission, okay? So yes, it says that over anybody um, before 25 or over 25, 25 and over, I'm sorry, um, who was not, uh, who gets diagnosed with it, they end up having a shorter lifespan of up to 60 years old. So um, with all that doom and gloom, let's talk about some solutions, but also let's talk about some more triggers with food. So let's start with the triggers with food. So what are some triggers that you're, you are eating that can actually trigger your psoriasis? Do you know food is everything? Food is everything. What we put in our body is what displays on what comes out of us, even with our emotions, okay? <laughs> okay, so um, let's talk about that. Um, psoriasis is getting um, triggered. You can get triggered by psoriasis with a diet such as meats, red meats in particular, aggravates psoriasis. So this is the bad diet, the poor diet of um, people who have psoriasis and they're eating this type of stuff. Highly processed foods, any processed foods, period, can aggravate your psoriasis. Um, we're talking about sausage and porks, bacon, all of those type of things can aggravate your psoriasis. Dairy, lots of dairy products can aggravate your psoriasis. Sorry, you're going to have to cut back on the cheese unless you're going towards something that's vegan. <laughs> You're going to have to cut back on it because it's going to aggravate your psoriasis um, and just red meats and stuff like that. Now, here's a fun and enjoyable fact. How many of you think that coffee actually aggravates your psoriasis? How many of you think that? Is anybody still here with me on the live? Okay, this is a fun fact, and some of you are going to jump for joy with this one. There were studies that was shown, um, there was like a sort of like a misscientific rumor that coffee aggravates your psoriasis. Well, it comes to find out that when they went back and did more research, that coffee does not aggravate your psoriasis. So if somebody told you and you have psoriasis that, oh, you shouldn't drink that coffee. What are you doing? You're drinking coffee. It's going to make your psoriasis worse. Be happy to know that that's not going to cause it. Now, if it does, then of course, by all means, stop drinking it. It's just common sense. But it has shown that people do not get aggravated by their cup of joe. So go ahead and have it. Which to me, it makes sense because if you're drinking um, a coffee that's not highly processed with chemicals, like there's some organic coffees out there, 
It's not stripping away the high antioxidants that coffee has. Hmm. Yes, coffee has antioxidants. When you drink it black, <laughs> I just have to say that because um, the studies have shown that if people drink coffee with, you know, dairy and loads of sugar, it takes away from the benefits. So just putting that out there. All right. So coffee does not aggravate your psoriasis. That's a plus. That's a happy plus. So let's talk about a good diet. What can we do to reinforce that remission that we're trying to push for if you have psoriasis or you know someone that has psoriasis? Okay, let's talk about eating more fruits. You want to eat more fruits? You want to eat more veggies? Make sure they're not um, genetically modified. <laughs> that would help. Um, berries. It, it really expressed on the research about berries. Some people overlook berries. Berries have so much A, C, and E in them. And that's what's part of building your skin, helping your skin out. So um, you definitely want to eat the berries, okay? And Valentine's is coming right up, so you can eat the berries, okay, in extra amounts. <laughs> Some of y'all caught that. I'm trying to wake y'all up. Come on now. All right, cherries. I love cherries. I don't like cherries in a jar. Something wrong with that. <laughs> but I do love fresh cherries. And Texas, when we get those fresh cherries in the bag, oh, I'm so there. The dark cherries and the red cherries. But cherries also is good to eat for psoriasis. Okay, leafy greens. Of course, we know what leafy greens can do. We're talking about the kales, you know, all of that dark romaine, lettuce, all of that stuff, anything dark, you go for it. Those are the ones that have the most benefits for you, okay? So um, it also talks about anti-upping on your omega-3s. You know, you want to eat salmon, sardines, omega-12s, omega-5s, all the omegas. You want to get into those. Omega-3s and fatty acids help with your psoriasis. Antioxidant um, enriched herbs. So it also talks about herbs. Now, some people get herbs mixed up with leafy greens. People, we got to know the difference. <laughs> Cabbage, kale, lettuce, all of that is called leafy greens. When we start, we, when we start talking about, I'm getting dry mouth, thyme, rosemary, you know, burdock, that type of stuff. Now we're talking about herbs, okay? We're talking about herbs. So it says that herbs help you with your psoriasis. So maybe you want to sprinkle a little rosemary. Make sure it's fresh. Fresher the better. But if you have dried, make sure it's just dried be fresh. <laughs> you know what I mean. Okay, not something that's been sitting on the shelf for 25, 30 years, okay? Because herbs do have a life, uh, life, short lifespan. Okay, so you want to have herbs. You want to add that to your diet. So even if it's sprinkling a little rosemary, a little bit of cumin, cumin, yes, is a herb. Um, all those different type of herbs and spices, especially um, the darker, greener ones, can actually help with that. And also turmeric. Turmeric is powerful as well for inflammation so that helps a lot and ginger i love ginger because i add gingers to just about everything my tea you know my tea <laughs> um i chop it up you know with food and stuff like that so i love fresh ginger ginger is very spicy so make sure that you you chop it up in a dose that you can stand but it's great for inflammation and um thyme, sage, it talks about all those herbs. So whatever herbs you can get on, definitely add that and incorporate it. Oregano, beet, spaghetti, you know, and you have that spaghetti sauce there, go get you some regular oregano and just sprinkle some extra on top. It's not going to hurt anything. Oregano is a little bit strong, but it's not going to hurt anything, okay? Uh, so you, those are some of the things you can do as well. And um, it says eat heart healthy sources of fats. Now, guys, people don't know this. This is just a little nutritional fact. Sugar, 
Uh, carbohydrates, I want to say sugar, but carbohydrates are good for you, but you need the right carbohydrates, the right types of sugar for your body, okay? Um, the wrong type of sugars is artificial sugars and all of that type of stuff, so you need that for your body. Now, let's talk about the healthy fats. You do need fat in your body, but you need healthy fats, okay? Healthy fats. We're not talking about a whole lot of grease and no greasy chicken and all that type of stuff. That's not heart healthy. When they're talking about heart healthy fat, fatty um, sources of fat, we're talking about avocado. Avocado, I love avocado. Avocado is very dense in nutritional fatty acids. So you want to lean towards those vegetables and fruits. Well, mostly vegetables that have those fatty acids and fruits. Avocado is a fruit for those that didn't know. No, it's not a vegetable, even though they make it act like it in guacamole, okay? <laughs> but yeah, um, right along with the tomato, it's a fruit too, guys. I know, I know. It doesn't look like it. Uh, so you want to have those type of healthy fatty acids. And peanut butter is another fatty type um healthy nuts to have in your body that has fatty acids in it. So it talks about having olive oil. Olives uh, is another fatty acid type of vegetable. Okay, you can have that or using olive oil. You know, make sure it's extra uh, extra um, cold press or whatever organic olive oil. You want the best for your body. And I say that because that means it's less chemically processed. You want to lean towards the items that are less chemically processed, no chemical process at all, period. So when you're talking about cold press, it's no chemical process to that olive oil or other oils you may use. But olive oil is a high fatty um, a vegetable that you can use or oil that you can use on um, your food, your salads, when you're cooking fish, whatever the case may be. So you definitely want to lean towards that. And it talks about eating seeds, so sunflower seeds, um, pistachios, whatever, you know, eat some seeds, um, nuts, walnuts, almonds, peanuts, if you don't have a nut allergy, you know, drink more coconut milk, that's a nut, almond milk, that's another way to get your, your non-dairy dairy, <laughs> as I call it, because I drink, I don't mess with the cow milk at all, period, I mess with the nut milk, so coconut, cashew, sign me up, um, you know, all of those type of milks, coconut, cashew, almond milk, sign me up. So those are what you want to intake if you can tolerate those and you don't have an allergic reaction to any of that stuff. So that's some of the good diet, but let's get to a stronger supplement, guys, that you can take. And we are almost at the end of this slide. So a stronger supplement that you can take that will actually go into your cannabinoid system and lighten it up and brighten it up and start fighting those issues that you have. That is CBD oil. Now guys, CBD oil correctly sourced can actually help you with issues with your skin conditions. It can actually help with that. So you definitely want to check out our source of CBD oil. Why? Because it's cleanly sourced. We are GMP certified, which means we practice good manufacturing, okay? That means we don't treat our, our hemp any type of way. We make sure that it's in fresh soil, that it's in clean soil, that everything is correct for it to give its highest nutritional mineral vitamin content benefit for your body okay now for those of you who don't believe me let me share a fact with you there are companies out there that actually will take hemp hemp crops they actually grow hemp crops still but they are used to detox the, the soil so let me stop right there now if cbd or hemp plants, which is extracted, the CBD is extracted from the hemp. If it's that strong enough, people, now think with me here, 
if it's that strong enough to pull toxins out of contaminated soil, what benefits is it doing for your body when it's actually correctly sourced? So back to my um, facts about why CBD is not all created equal and ours is, okay? There are some companies that will actually grow hemp crops, but they are sourcing them from companies who are using the hemp crop to detox soil that is contaminated with toxins. So remember what I was saying that whatever goes in that soil and goes into that plant and goes into you is what your body is going to receive. So if that hemp crop is using for is used for a special purpose of detoxing the soil and all those toxins are roaming around in that crop of hemp and somebody comes along and says a company comes along and say hey uh, we can still use that crop we can turn it into cbd and make money guess what they're processing it and they've sent it to you and guess what you're getting that chemicalized non-beneficial cbd and not only that a lot of companies who end up doing that, they end up using fillers in their CBD. And fillers are when you turn around the bottle and you see stuff like silica, which is what your kids play in the sandbox with, in your supplements. So guys, that's why I tell you that you definitely want to research your CBD and you definitely want to try our CBD because our CBD is GMP certified, GMO free, which means it's not in the lab being cooked up with a thousand leaves on one stem and a thousand leaves on another just so that you can get CBD. It is quality source. It's not genetically modified. It's naturally grown and taken care of. Not only that, it's cruelty free, which means we don't abuse any animals at all in order to give you your CBD. And for those people who just love to have things that are made in the great U.S. of A, we have that. We have that. So our products are made in the U.S. of A, in the USA, and you can be able to purchase that knowing that you got a product that was finally made of quality in your own country. Okay? But we welcome all those people who want to try our CBD, who are in the countries who are able to get it, to try it, okay? So you can go ahead and do that. And not only that, we offer a 60-day try it or send it back deal offer. So you can't lose. You cannot lose at all by trying our supplements. Now, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this segment. I don't want to sell you. I want to give you the powerful information on what you can do for your body and know that there's always a solution. Never walk into a doctor's office. Never walk into a place where they tell you that's it, that's all you can do. Always take another option. Always search for another option. There is hope in a needlepoint. In a needlepoint of sight, there is hope. Always remember that. And the hope that I want to give to you today is the option of finding a solution for your skin conditions that you may have or any other health problem that you may, you may have. Now, guys, I'm glad you enjoyed this show. This is the end, but be sure to tune in next time to CBD Talk Live where we have more topics to offer and show you and to just brighten up your mind about hey, this is going on with my body too. And hey, here's a solution that I can probably try out to help me out, okay? So guys, take care. Be sure to like, share, and hit those notifications that Facebook has now for lives so that you can be able to receive a notification when we are about to go live and not miss anything. Guys, take care. Have a blessed night. And... As always, as always, take care of yourself, okay? Bye.